Okay, on here. Last night, you just had to color code. So depending on what colors you used, will it match mine perfectly? No. But to save time, I'm going to do several at once. I don't suggest this when you're working, but when we're checking, it will work. So I'm going to go through in pink. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write my key up here at the top. Pink is going to be my variables. Make it a little bit bigger so I don't have to. OK, in number one, Ethan, what's my variable? The V is my variable. Elise, in number three. B. B. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. Owen, number five. M. M. Okay. The other thing, uh, another one we are going to do our constant. I'm going to do it in green. Constant in number one, Brendan. Eight and twenty-six. Leah, number three. Constant. Yep, we're just doing constants on one, three, and five. Fifteen and twenty-three. Good job. And on number five, Hallie. Four and negative twelve. And I could include that positive four. That's the only one with a symbol in it. What am I missing? What am I missing that I haven't labeled, Emmy? The coefficient. Why are the coefficients weird on these ones? I'm going to do coefficients in blue just because it shows up a little bit. Yeah, because when I look at that for a number in front of the variable, it should be right there, but is there one? No, because it's an invisible what? One. So that's where all of our coefficients should be. And the coefficient on all of these is just positive one. Ooh, that's a really fat one. Positive one. Positive one. Okay, questions on those three. Check as we're going over them. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. Lost all my coding. See if I can get the rest of them in here. Oh, it only goes 13. Okay. Okay, variables were pink. A uh, variable in seven, Lily. M. M. Leo in nine. V. What? V. The V. Ten Owen or eleven Owen. Uh, the X. Thirteen Afton. The B. Well, hold on. Those are just the variables. Are you talking about rewrite? Okay, yep, go ahead and rewrite that one for me, Afton. Good job. 1 18th B, and I'll go ahead and highlight it there. That'll make it easier for our coefficient in a second. Okay? Constants. Number seven. Tatum, what are my constants in number seven? Mm hmm. Almost. Negative nine. Yep. Negative nine. And negative thirteen. Meyer, what are my constants in number nine? Number nine right here. Okay, negative twenty seven and negative fifteen. Number eleven, Ellie. Okay, is there another one in this one? Nope. Um, number 13, Dom, what are my constants? Um, negative 6 and 18. Oh, no. You're right, just negative 6. Just negative 6. Last color, we're looking for coefficients. Emmy, on number 7. Yeah, there's an invisible one in front of that M, so you should have an invisible one filled in. I'm just going to do a blue spot. Number nine, Elise. What is my coefficient on number nine? Coefficient for number nine mm -hmm. is the invisible one. The invisible one in front of the V. Good job. 
Number 11. Leah, what's my coefficient on number 11? Eight. The 8. Leo, number 13, what is my coefficient? 1 18th. Good job. Okay, before we move on to the other page, labeling, we're going to talk about solving. So pull out your notes that you took yesterday. These are all one step equations. Leah, can you read me what we wrote under one step equations yesterday? To solve a one step equation, isolate the variable by using inverse or opposite operations. Okay. To solve one step equations, we isolate the variable by using inverse operations or opposite operations. What does the word isolate mean? You guys should be very familiar with that word because you're COVID children. What does isolate mean, Leo? To get, it by get it by itself. If you have to be isolated, you have to stay by yourself. So when we're solving these, we have to isolate the variable, which means get it on one side of the equation all by itself. It doesn't matter which side. Whichever side it's on, leave it alone. It can be on the left, it can be on the right, just get it by itself, which means you have to get rid of everything else around it. So looking at, I'm going to go back up to the top. And I know you have all the highlighter stuff. I'm just going to leave it right here. We have to isolate the variable by using inverse operations, but we also have to keep in mind our balance. What does that equal sign represent? Leo? Or what does it mean? Well, it means that um, A plus B has to equal something. Yeah, it means whatever's on the left side of that equal sign has to have the same value as whatever's on the right side. So we're going to show our balance. So with your pencil, pick up your pencil. Draw your line at the equal sign. That's a reminder that, hey, these should be in balance. Our rule says isolate the variable by using inverse operations. So we are focusing. I'm going to put my hand over the left side of this equation because my variable is on the right side. I'm going to cover this up. I have to isolate the variable. What is with the variable? A positive 8. What is the inverse of, or the opposite of positive 8, Brendan? Negative 8, but we look at it as minus 8. So we will show minus 8 right there. If we subtract 8 from the right side, we have to subtract 8 from the left side to keep it in balance. Now we clean it up. What is 26 minus 8? 18 equals, just drops down. What is 8 minus 8? It cancels. We just show that it cancels. We don't have to write in zero, because zero is nothing. Do we have a positive V left? Yes. Now, when we get to harder problems, that the variable does have to be positive. Okay? It has to be a positive one in front of it. Wait. So, what would you do if you We're getting, that's a two-step equation. Yeah. If it has a negative V, we'll, we'll get there. Yes, but they don't call them three-step equations. They call them one-step, two-step, or multi-step. Multi is anything more than two. Okay, number three. Who thinks they know what work I can show? Where should I start with? Leo? Draw my line at my equal sign to represent my balance. Which side do I need to put my focus on, Dawson? The left side. Why am I focusing on the left side? Because the, um, there's the, uh, the, the variable is over there. So now I have to isolate the variable, which means get it all by itself. Ethan, what is with the variable that I need to get rid of? Um, that is the variable. What else is on that side? 15. How do I, what's the opposite of positive 15, Owen? Negative 15. But if I write negative 15 right here, instead of calling it negative 15, what am I kind of translating it to? Subtracting. Subtracting. Remember, minuses, negatives, they all kind of mash together. Tatum, if I subtract 15 from the left side, I have to subtract 15 from the other side. So now we clean it up. 
You don't have to do your lines. You can if you want. What is 15 minus 15? Zero. Do I have to write zero plus B? Nope. Cross it out. B equals, what's 23 minus 15? Eight. OK. Next one. Why is the next one getting a little bit trickier? Not that it's impossible, but what makes it a little bit trickier? Owen? There are negatives involved. Do we know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, positive and negative numbers? Yes, if you're still a little rusty, you have all of those rules on one piece of paper. Okay, so while you're doing your homework, if you need to get out your integer rules, you should have them all on one piece of paper. We did them all together so they'd be easy to find later on. I'm gonna draw my line. Which side am I focusing on, Emmy? The side, the side with the variable, so the left side. Dom, what is with the variable that I need to get rid of? Four. A plus four, what's the opposite of positive four? Negative. Negative four, so I'm gonna write it directly under it, minus four. If I subtract four from the left side, I have to do the same on the other side. Now, this is where it gets ugly. I have M equals cancels. Are in my classes? I do not. Are they with Mrs. Beer? Um, I don't know. Maybe go ask Miss Carol because I don't know what where she's what she's doing today. Okay. Negative twelve minus four. Let's write this out to the side. Negative twelve minus four. So how do we subtract integers? How do we subtract? Three words. Blank the blank. Hallie. Add the opposite. What does that mean, Hallie, to add the opposite? Okay. So I do change the minus to a plus. So I change the minus to a plus. That's a positive 4, so I make it a negative 4. What about the front number? It stays the same. So we have negative 12 plus 4. What is my rule, Ellie, for adding with the same sign? Just add, keep the sign. Just add, keep the common sign. So m is equal to negative 16. And remember, any of these answers, I should be able to substitute back into the original problem to check it. And let's just do it uh, common sense wise. If you owed me $16, that's M, and you pay me back $4, do you now only owe me $12? Yes. yes. So we should be able to check all of these answers by substituting them back into the original. Let's do another one. M minus 9 equals negative 13. Brendan, which side am I focusing on? The side with the variable. What do I need to get rid of, Brendan? Nine, so minus nine. OK. How do I get rid of a minus 9? Uh, yep, plus 9. OK, so on the left side, I'm left with m. Minus 9 plus 9 cancels, because those are inverse or opposite. If I'm adding with different signs, Subtract, give it the sign of the bigger number. What's 13 minus 9? 4. 4 is my answer positive 4 or negative 4? Negative. negative. OK, again, if you, the rules are still new. You may need to get out that rule sheet. But that's why we had to revisit integers before we could move on to these equations. Because if they're all positive numbers, they're easy. But we start throwing in negative numbers, especially at the beginning of seventh grade. Number nine, Afton, which side am I focusing on? OK, what do I need to get rid of? How do I get rid of a minus 15? Well, right, it is minus. What's the opposite of minus 15? OK, add 15 or positive 15. So now we clean it up. V hasn't been touched. Minus 15 plus 15 cancels. They cancel because they're opposites. Anytime you take a number plus its opposite, 
you will always get zero. They will always cancel out. I'm adding with different signs. Tatum, what's my rule if I'm adding with different signs? OK, keep the sign the bigger number. So I know my answer is going to be negative. What do I do with the digits? If I'm adding with different signs. Nope. Amy? Subtract, give it the sign of the bigger number. And again, we just have to keep practicing. So 27 minus 15 is 12. So my answer is negative 12. Again, let's check it mentally. I'm plugging negative 12 in for V. If you owed me $12 and you took away another 15 from me, do you now owe me $27? Yes. A common wrong answer would be like 42, positive or negative. And when you went to plug that in, it wouldn't make sense. Does the, do the steps make sense? It's not that you're going to mess up on the steps. What are you going to mess up on? The integer rules, the adding and subtracting integer rules. OK, let's go down a couple more. What's weird about these ones? Ellie? Okay, we actually don't add or subtract on these. We multiply or divide. Because we have to do the opposite of what's already there. So let's rewrite this one as negative 104 equals 8 times x. Because that's what 8x means. And you won't have to rewrite this every time. I'm just making sure we all know that 8x is 8 times x. Which side do we have to focus on, Brendan? The side with the variable. That is still exactly the same. We have to focus on the side with the variable. Now I have to isolate the variable by using inverse operations. 8 times a number I don't know. What would cancel out that 8? Divide by 8. Divide by eight. If you multiply by something and then divide by something, does that cancel it out? Yeah. Yes. So we would show just divide by 8. But if I do it to the right side, I also have to do it to the left side. Divide by 8. Anytime you have a number on top and bottom of a fraction, does it cancel? So we can just show it just like that. On the right side, I'm left with x. Now I have to remember my multiply and divide rules. They're easier than add and subtract. Who remembers the rule for this? Ellie? OK, you just divide normal. Why is it negative? Tatum? Because um, if they're opposite, they have different. If they have different, um, if they have different symbols, like positive or negative, then they will be, then it will be negative. Yeah, but different signs, the answer is negative. Am I divided out yet? 13. 13. So negative 13. Good job. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to rewrite it because we had it rewritten. And then we just had it as B, but is it 1 18th B? Yeah, same thing, times B. Which side am I focusing on? Leo? The side with the variable. We're actually going to work this one twice. I'm going to show you the... Um, way that will make the most sense, but the one that will be easier math. So I'm focusing on the right side. What do I have to get rid of, Leah? Um, the 118. 118th. How is it attached to my variable? With what kind of math? Multiplication. multiplication. What is the inverse or opposite of multiply by 118? Divide by 118. Divide by 118. So we're going to show it like this. Why does that look really weird? What do we, does anybody remember what that's called? If I have a fraction in a fraction? No, good guess. What if you have lots of sentences within sentences? 
not a run, a complex. Okay, it's called a complex fraction. But what you need to know on this side, what is 1 18th divided by 1 18th? One, they cancel out to become one, okay, which is what I want in front of that variable. Now, if we divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as doing what? Multiplying by the reciprocal. So what math am I actually going to have to do here? What is the reciprocal of 1 18th? 18. 18. Really, you're just taking negative 6 times 18. But if you need to write that out, you can. Divided by 1 18th, negative 6 times 18 over 1, which is just, I really just have to do negative 6 times 18. Let's do the math. What is it, 68? 8, that's 4, 108. Positive or negative? Uh, negative? Why is it negative? Okay, why did I start with negative 6? I divided and I got a really big number. It's asking how many 1 18th pieces are in 6 holes. So picture 6 holes pizza, because you can picture that, pizza, P-I-Z-Z-A, and I, you cut each pizza into 18 equal pieces, how many total pieces are there? The answer would be 108. Okay, so that's kind of what you're doing here, is if you have six whole somethings and you're splitting it into 118th sections, how many sections do you have? 108, but this is negative, which you don't can't have yeah, negative pizza. Negative pizza. Just trying to get you to visualize the math, not the negatives. Okay, we are going to stop there for today because I think that's a lot to take in all at once. Your homework, we'll, we'll check the other side tomorrow. Your homework is to try and solve 2 through 14 even on this page. Okay, you don't have to highlight but you are solving 2 through 14 even. Okay, so just the front side. Do you have to touch the back side tonight? No, you don't have to do anything on the back tonight.